Hello my darlings, this is the third time I'm trying this intro, so uh, yeah, I almost just want to say let's get right into it. But before we do so, uh, I'd like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and comment something down below, and to share the video around. Uh, this is the best way you can indirectly support me, because this increases my standing in the YouTube algorithm. Um, and when my standing YouTube algorithm is better, YouTube suggests my videos more. And the more it gets suggested, the higher is the chance that new people find my videos, subscribe, become regular viewers, etc. Um, just for example, look at my last video. That got a lot of views. It would be nice if we could repeat that. Uh, because if we can repeat that, this would mean that I could spend more time writing and actually deliver longer and better stories. And yeah, it would take away a lot of pressure, basically, because I could take longer breaks in between videos. But uh, <laughs> that's enough talk about that. Uh, I'd like to remind you to ask me anything down in the comments, because I brought back the cute animal picture of the day and question time. Question time is uh, at the end of the videos where I answer one of your questions that you asked in either my Discord AMA channel or down in the comments below. So uh, go ahead and maybe in the next video I answer one of your questions. So uh, yeah, here's the cute picture of the day and let's get right into the story. It was a mistake. Something that should not have happened. But it did. You had fallen in love with your teacher, Shota Aizawa. Every day you were sitting in the 1A classroom, staring at him with longing eyes. The way his long hair flowed around his shoulder and his mysterious aura filled your heart with warmth. The boys in your class had nothing to compare to him. The wish to be with him in a relationship came during the attack on the USJ. You had the privilege of never really encountering villains in real life. And watching him charge straight first into what you would call certain doom impressed you deeply. And it took all your energy and determination not to rush after him when the hulking beast that was the Nomu began breaking his skull. After the battle, you had been the only one from your class to visit him in the hospital. You really wanted to confess your feelings to him. But even if he was interested, this could lead to a scandal you could never recover from. With a heavy sigh, you sat down in the cafeteria with your friends. Momo, Zero, and Sue. So, what's wrong, Ribbit? asked Sue. You've been very stressed looking the past few days, Ribbit, Ribbit. The others nodded. Were you really that obvious? You blushed in embarrassment. Bringing a smile to Momo's face, who seemed to immediately read your body language. Oh, so... Who is the lovely boy? She snickered. Your blush intensified and you whimpered. Jiro chuckled. <laughs> I bet it's Bakugo. You two are always training together. Well, she wasn't wrong. You and Katsuki had been training together for a while now. Mostly because your quirks worked off of each other very well. Your quirk, make love not war, allowed you to secrete a napalm-like substance from your hands. While its burn wasn't as severe as the actual chemical, it burned for quite some time and required heat-resistant blankets to put out. Though, she's into brute angry guys, Ribbit. I bet it's Victoria. You glanced at Uraku, who was sitting a few seats away from you with Ida and Izuku. Then you shook your head. Izuko is nice, but I don't really like green. 
Tzu blinked a few times in response, clearly thinking of a witty remark to throw at you. And you quickly added, On my guys, Tzu. I didn't mean to offend. She gave a content sigh. And immediately your friends returned to the guessing game. Which eventually turned into a heated debate on who the hottest guy in class was. Until about three minutes of your lunch break were left and you felt Jiru put her arm on your shoulder. Please, she said to worry and fear in her eyes. Please don't say it's me, Neda. Hearing Jiru even assume it felt like an insult to you. And you shook your head. No, I'm not into perfs, you said meekly. Besides, you checked your right and left just to be safe. His girlfriend would kill me. I mean, have you seen what she did to Monomoa? The other girls nodded in unison. Just tell us already, demanded Momo. I can't. You mumbled and bit your lower lip. He would get into trouble. Sue's eyes widened. <gasps> so it's a teacher, Ribbit! She blurted out. And Momo gave her a light slap on the cheek. Not so loud. If it really is a teacher, she could get in trouble just for this. Ugh, sorry, Ribbit. Once again you blushed and the conversation died down. Your friends tried to cheer you up, but this realization hung heavy between you and them. On your way back, Jiru was the first to talk. You know, it's not uncommon for students to like their teachers a little too much. Momo nodded. Besides, it's just a crush. You'll get over that. You knew they were trying to prevent you from doing anything stupid, but felt really judgmental from them. The rest of the day went on as normal. However, you could not spare to look at Aizawa for too long. Otherwise, the others would figure out who it really was. Once school was over, you stayed inside the classroom as per usual. You wanted to be the last to leave, so you could stay with your sensei as long as possible. Today was a special occasion as he stayed behind correcting class tests. While you pretended to go over your own class material a few more times to make absolutely sure you understand them, at least that was your excuse. Occasionally, you heard your teacher chuckle while correcting the papers, which was almost followed by him clicking his red pen and writing up a storm into the unfortunate student's work. By now you could tell whose work he was correcting by the frequency of times it happened and the length of text he was sarcastically writing. Right now it must be either Mina or Kaminari, by the way he was both laughing and writing. Clearly the man loved his job. <laughs> Can you keep a secret? He said suddenly. Uh, I can, Sensei. You answered with a blush and he chuckled. Sometimes I really wish the privacy rules weren't so strict, because I would love to share this with anyone, really. I'm not saying any names, but this answer is so wrong. <laughs> he ended his sentence with a quick laugh. It was clearly Kaminari's paper he was correcting. You two fell silent again. Pretending to think you put one hand under your chin, just so you could look at him. He had such a concentrated face right now. His left eyebrow was slightly raised. Probably Momo's work. He only did that when she was giving him something exceptionally good to read over. Once the sun had begun to set, he neatly put the papers into his desk and then looked at you. Still here? He asked coldly panic quickly rose and you stuttered ah i uh, um i i i i need help yeah 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 that that's why i'm still here i need help 
He raised an eyebrow and sighed. Uh, fine. It's not like I don't get overtime. He slowly walked next to you and bent down to look over your papers. So, what's the problem? You pointed at a random question on your history worksheet. Huh. I thought you were some kind of history nut. Thought you'd be able to answer it. As I will pause and give you a look. Are you lying to me? He asked. You gave a meek whimper in response. If you have a crush on me, say it. Not like you're the first one. I'm sorry, Sensei? Your teacher sighed and sat down on the empty desk next to yours, followed by a cold stare. So my intuition was right. Huh. He gave a quick chuckle. Guess I owe midnight ten bucks now. Ten bucks? You mumbled. He crossed his arms and looked away. Oh. A few years ago now, me and her have a bed running. She says that one day I will develop feelings for a student, and they will have them for me too. Wait, what? Did Aizawa just tell you that he had a crush on you too? It's not professional. Something I really try not to be. He smiled. A genuine smile, filled with promises and love. Three years this bed has been running until you came to class. There's just something about you. You're mature and have quite a cute face that is difficult to resist. Your heart jumped upon hearing him praise your looks like that. I love you, Sensei. You bleed it out not being able to hold your emotions back anymore. He scratched the back of his head before standing up and towering over you. A caring, almost fatherly smile on his face. Slowly, he put his thumb under your chin to make you look up at him. If you keep up with your schoolwork, I don't see any issue in waiting a few years until your graduation. Your eyes widened. This was so wrong. Yet, it felt so right. What do you say? You tried to nod, but still, he had his finger on your chin. So you merely smiled and said, y Yes, Mr. Aizawa, Sensei. With an amused yet confident chuckle, he pressed his lips onto yours. Closing your eyes, you took a deep breath. His smell was somewhere between a cigarette smoke and licorice. It reminded you of home and implanted you the wish to be with him for the rest of your life. And slowly, your lips parted. This is just a taste. Come to me in a few years, he said seductively. Welcome to question time, the part of the video where I answer one question and one question only. And today's question was given by Lily Fly. And she's asking, hey Suitor, mind if I have a virtual hug, Ubu? Fine, but only if I get to call you my little pot champ. Okay, come here. And yes, I allow you to take this out of context. 